Welcome to the Bonito Guitar Channel. We're here with the one and only Andy Timmons. Hello. And today we're going to talk a little bit about his playing, his approach to practicing certain things, and maybe you'll find something useful in it. Hope so. Yeah. I'll show you my one lick. I have one lick. <laughs> I'm working. I'm still working on it. It's, gonna, it's coming. We'll talk about how I practice that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for watching. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. So um, first of all. Thank you so much for yeah, I'm, I'm happy here. to be here. It's great, man. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. And he stole my guitar, man. Wait, yeah, it's got the like same. identical identical twins almost. <laughs> this one may be a little older. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're famous for um, a lot of qualities in your playing, but hmm. one thing that I'd like to point out first, because this is something that to me gets more more important in the in the YouTube ages, is that yeah. you're famous for your great tone, for oh, your thank you. great vibrato. Um, um, do Thank you have you. some some advice for younger players how to how to let's say approach vibrato how you start? Yeah, it's modulation? that's the thing. I mean, because I can I can uh, I can remember in my very young years of playing, you know, mm -hmm. when I was doing my first gigs from 13 forward, you know, and, and youthful energy is is in full force, and my vibrato was very fast. You know, yeah. I think with, you know, and the, the younger you are, the, the your, maybe your hands aren't quite as strong, and mm -hmm. you've got that youthful energy. So over time, and it was even being pointed out to me, even though I, you know, at the age of 16 and 17, I, I thought I was pretty good. Yeah. But I, had, I remember, I remember very vividly an older guitar player that I really respected. You know, said we should really, we should work on that vibrato. It sounds yeah. kind of fast, and I was a little, I was a little hurt by that. But he was right, you know. Okay. But I think that, and had being honest, it's, it was never a thing that I, I said, okay, I've got to work on my vibrato. I'm going to slow it down. Mm -hmm. It's something that really, really kind of happened over time naturally. Okay. The thing about the thing about me and my playing, I mean, at, at certain points in my life, I became a better practicer, but mm -hmm. I've never been a great like regimented. Here's what I'm going to work on today. And okay. I was never very structured, but I was always playing. Okay. And that's that'll be the that, that'll be the underlying theme here, folks. Is that, yeah, we can definitely we can definitely structure structure what we work on, but the main thing is that, and all these things are going to come mm -hmm. if you're playing and you're yeah. making music. I was really fortunate that at a very young age, like I say, when I was 13, I was in my first band. Yeah. So I was already, I was good enough to be playing Rush and Kiss and mm -hmm. all the 70s rock stuff. Yeah. Um, maybe not that great, but I was playing and I, was, I got into a band with some older guys, mm -hmm. right? And so we started gigging. By the age of 16, I was, you know, three nights a week in, yeah. in, in bars, you know, definitely way too young to be doing it. But um, in that comes that experience and I'm learning songs how am I learning those songs? Well, there's no tab books. Yeah. There's, this is way before the internet, folks. Some of you don't even know what that's like. There was no even, there was no even VHS tapes. I just had to put on the record and, and learn the songs, the same way the Beatles did it, the same way that Hendrix did it, the same way that Stevie Ray did it. Yeah. And, in, and in doing so, you're going to walk right in front of the camera. <laughs> Hello, this is a cameo appearance. We need to pay him extra. We need to pay him extra. <laughs> you can wait. You can go, go back by and wave. That'd be good. No, but the thing is, is that what I didn't realize was that the way those guys did it was the same way that I did it, and we earned it. Mm -hmm. Really, very quite literally, we actually had to learn each each uh, lick and each song, you know, just with, just with our ear and maybe what we'd seen other players do, because yeah. we didn't have a lot of, even on television, there wasn't a whole lot of exposure. Yeah. We talk about Mike Stern, the first time I saw Mike Stern was on um, Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. the famous comedy weekend show, yeah. and he was with Miles Davis in 1982. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy crap, it was, it was an epiphany seeing Mike for the first time. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get back to that, but so much of the vibrato you know, it's going to be who you're listening to. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're listening to Albert King or you're listening to Stevie Ray or Hendrix, you know, there are there are ways of trying to you know, starting, yeah. starting to try to emulate that. Now, when I have a student or something, uh, or I'm trying to demonstrate vibrato, one of the first things I like to do is say, try playing a note on your guitar and do this with me. Play the note C, okay? And no vibrato, exactly. No vibrato. It's kind of hard to do. Yeah, Don't you feel right. like you you need to do something? I think as, yeah. as guitars we we're very quick. Yeah. We're very quick yeah. to try to add that, but see what it feels like not to do that. Yeah. Or bend a note. It's yeah. Kind of weird. Really but there, but there's that. a beauty in that. And so I've, I've gotten. I've, I've found myself more recently not adding vibrato, but, but at certain times because it's really effective. Yeah. You know. Yeah. See, I mean, it was, it was a bent note, but not, not, yeah. Then, and then maybe, because there's a lot of singers that, 
Oh, they might add the vibrato after holding that note, so try it. So not starting the vibrato right away, but... Yeah, try adding it, adding it slowly in, so... Ultimately, everything about the guitar that, that, that produces great tone is about control. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that have to try to control on the guitar, especially when you introduce distortion, mm. right? Because that adds all kinds of extraneous noise. Um, another thing to point out on the, on the vibrato that I noticed the other day, really some of these, for the first time, I'm starting to learn things to, to communicate to other mm -hmm. players, is that I would have been sure that I was anchoring with my thumb like Hendrix used to do, grabbing yeah. this. But it turns out I, my thumb's coming off, when I, especially if I'm making a vibrato with my index finger. Yeah. That comes off and I'm really just, I'm pinching. Yeah. With you know, but it's pretty forceful. There's a yeah. lot. Of, there's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. there to. But then when I come up, if I bend on yeah. that with that th with the ring finger, then. Yeah. And so you got you got your other two fingers that are helping with the strength of that one. And then I've been anchoring with the thumb. Yeah. But there it comes off, and maybe that's just a to get a little bit more wrist movement. Yeah. I mean, there's some guys that, you know, come all the way off and do all these fancy things. Yeah. But that's just, a lot of it is just kind of happened naturally over time. But you can, you can make an exercise out of it like that just by, by starting off with Nova Bar and just kind of blending it, blending it slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of tone, do you also have, um, taking a closer look at your, at your right hand, where uh -huh. to pick and how to hold your pick to get a certain sound, or yeah. did that just come naturally? That's, that again, uh, are you familiar with the, uh, the Troy Grady series? Uh, yeah. yeah, Cracking the Code? Uh -huh. Okay, well, just know that I've never thought about any of that, but I am so inspired and entertained by those videos. Yeah. The one he did for Eric Johnson, for Ingve especially. Yeah. It's brilliant, and when you really look at pick, pick angle and all that, and anyway. But my thing is that, again, it happened over time as far as where to, you know. I'm gonna kill your <laughs> it's something that really developed over time as far as realizing, okay, if I pick down, it's gonna sound a certain way. Or I might, yeah. Like I'm, when I'm on the, the treble strings and I want harmonic content, mm -hmm. I'm usually more apt to pick up underneath because I have more room instead of going down. Keeping my volume down so we're, we're, we're probably not getting some of the, the bloom that we would out of the notes. But there, there's, there is a lot of detail there, and a lot of it is not just pick angle, but it's dynamic. Um, and I think a lot of that it came from some of the more jazz kind of influence as far as emulating some of the bebop players like Charlie Parker or, um, or uh, you know, Cannonball Adderley, the way they swung through yeah. lines and the way there was so much emphasis. You know. trying to keep, have an arc to phrases and, yeah. and have it be more vocal because there's emphasis when we speak and maybe not as much if you're to speak like this all the time and play everything to perfect yeah, you know it's gonna get boring. it's gonna get monotonous so it yeah. just seems more expressive and I think just as a the combination of players that I listened to throughout my developing years and still to this day I had those qualities even though I wasn't necessarily aware that that's what I was getting from yeah. it. but if you listen to Carlton mm -hmm. and Stern and, and Lukather and Robin Ford and some of the kind of the middle period guys that I got into after my rock, you know, yeah. from Ace Freely, you know. Yeah. Maybe not a lot of dynamic there, but a lot of good, a lot of good phrasing, a lot of good rock and roll, a lot of good, uh, a lot of good energy. And so um, that's the uh, jazz police calling right now. So. <laughs> jazz police, we heard a very bad bebop lick. We would like to, uh, so yeah, so the, the dynamic came from maybe some of the more subtle, you know, understated, mm. you know, guys, but blending it with the rock then just kind of made sense as I was putting it all together. Yeah.